Yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's shut off the music. All right, you guys. So welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we're going to talk to Dave Anderson, who's been in real estate since when would you say 19? 1985. Yeah. 1985. And look how young he looks. He started when he was 16. So um, yeah, he's going to talk to us a little bit about um, how to work by referral, work by referral, love on your people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very transactional. He's very relational, right? Exactly. So, so it's a little bit of difference um, there, but I think we can all learn a lot from him. So, um, so tell us a little bit how you got started well, in real estate as well. The uh, beginnings. Very back in the beginning, I wore a gold jacket. So uh, century, tw century 21 and then uh, Remax, we brought Remax to the area. Nobody had heard of Remax, but I like the idea of keeping more of my commission. So uh, Remax was a good fit and uh, thought Remax was the best company for a long time. A lot of other companies tried to recruit me over the years, including Keller Williams, and mm -hmm. uh, just thought I'd stay Remax forever. And then EXP came along and it just got on my radar in the last year. I kicked myself for not going a year earlier, but I did make the move about 90 days ago to EXP and I've not looked back. It's been wonderful. So, nice. Yeah. Woohoo! So, well, perfect. So, in the beginning, because I mean, we have agents that are seasoned. I mean, we got Tom Wall in the house. Woo woo! Marianne. I mean, great agents in the room. When you start real estate, I think the failure rate in the industry is like 80% of new agents fail, right? Mm -hmm. And it kills me because in my mind, I feel like it's it's not easy, but there is a roadmap to just stay in the game. And so when you were new back like me 20 years ago, it was a little bit different game. Yeah. But what did I think, what did you have to do when you started? Because you didn't have clients. So no, how I did mean, you, you had no clients. clients. And uh, initially what we did is back in the day, we had to, to write ads that would generate the phone to call, the phone to ring. And then when we did something called call controlling, when a phone call came in, they were very valuable. So mm -hmm. whenever somebody came, called in about a house for sale, then we had to identify them, figure out if they're a, a legitimate buyer or maybe another seller make an appointment. The only reason we were on the phone, make an appointment so that we could get face to face with them and then hopefully sell them a home and then uh, do it again, do it, you again. Know, do it again, do it again and again and again, hold open houses. Uh, we would uh, knock on doors. I would go out to my farm and I would put door hangers on all the doors and uh, knock. And if I saw neighbors, I'd just talk with them. Hey, you thought about selling your home in the next six months? I'd love to talk with you about that. You talk to people? Absolutely. All the time. <gasps> what? Is that what do. realtors do? Yeah. Oh, I thought they called us. Okay. So yeah. when, and funny enough, door knocking is huge in California. I mean, there, there are still- I think it's a lost art that needs to come back. It, and to me, I'm just so passionate about the basics because mm -hmm. the basics are truly what salespeople need to master. Mm -hmm. And then they can do whatever, social media, post cut, whatever, but the basics, right? And you- even though you do by referral only now, you started with the basics. Yeah. I started with the basics. It doesn't really, you can't ever just start by referral only. I mean, there's a few people that do a better job at that than others. Maybe a school teacher that knows hundreds of people and parents and, and they can just walk into it and, and know see. a lot of people already. That see. helps a lot. But most people getting in only know a few people. And so they sell a house to their brother or their mom or whatever. But then they're done. And now if you're going to stay in the business, you're going to have to figure out something else. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, after a lot of, of years of, of doing a really good job, as, as you get into the business and you're doing a good job for folks, you, you learn. And for me, it was trying to be the best I could for my people. And I just figured that they would automatically refer me. If I just did a great job for them, they would refer me. And after 10 years of that, I was maybe at 30 to 50% referral which isn't bad, but uh, I kind of wanted to do it all the time because I really like the referral business better than the cold calling and the door knocking and the pounding the pavement. I mean, that for me, it just wasn't as much fun as when people call me up and say, hey, Dave, I heard about you from so-and-so and I want you to come list my house. That's how that works. And so I kind of want that business. And those are the best ones, right? When you get the referral, and they, they already know you, love you, trust you. Yeah, they're already sold on David. They're Anderson. sold on David. So he doesn't have to go in and do what we do, which, you know, Mackenzie's gone on plenty. You, Adam's gone on plenty. They don't know you. They don't love you. And they sure as heck don't trust you, right, when they're a FISBO or expired. So that's a different art. It's like I have to build all that rapport. I have to get on their side. And then I have to get them to 
you know, trust me. So yes, by re referrals are amazing. Yes. And so, so, so then you, you started to build the business. When did you get involved with the Phoenix? I think in 2006, the Phoenix became a thing, right? Yeah. I kind of dabbled with the Phoenix before that kind of went to a couple of his events and stuff like that. Actually, I got involved with by referral only mm, I remember that. much earlier, like back mm -hmm. in the 90s, there was a guy named Joe Stump that started that whole idea of by referral only. So I started picking up bits and pieces and things like that and just tried to grow that way. So I started my by referral only meter started to grow on the other side of 50% heading towards 100. And uh, the more I did it, the more I said, this is how I want my business to be. There was a lady in my office, I remember, at Sign and Monaghan in Michigan, and her name was Nancy, and I would walk by her office because I was a brand new agent. So I, like, anything the agents did, I was like, what are they doing in there? You know, because they weren't, like, helping me get better. And I remember on her desk, she had a, a by referral only, and I was like, who does she think she is? Like, you know, just in my mind, I was like, I'm sitting here knocking on doors and going out to Fizbo's and leaving these packets, and Nancy seems to be getting all these this easy business. And I didn't know what that meant because I was new. I didn't know it was a thing or a coaching. I just thought she was by referral only. And so until I understood what it was. Well, there's no substitution for starting out early and doing all the hard work. I mean, there's just, and that's why most people fail. They just don't want to work. Yes. I mean, you have to learn how to speak with people. You have to learn how to memorize scripts and pre-memorize language that fits you so that when you speak, it's you talking, but you already know what you're going to say before you say it and uh, just how to serve the people and, and how to deal with brand new situations where you've not ever met these people before. They might have their hand up like this. I don't really want to talk with you, but you have to overcome all those objections and all that issue. And that's just a skill set that you learn the first year or two that you're in the business. But then after that, I believe that everybody that's in the business should have a significant portion of their business by referral only. You can still continue to run a team and, and do all the things that you guys do so awesomely. Um, but personally, I would like to cherry pick only the people that are already sold on Dave. And that's what I've done. So Yeah. And I, I want to learn some of his tips and tricks today, too, because we have a huge database. And so we're very, again, transactional where we're hunting for the business and getting it out there. But we have a gold mine of people that know, love and trust us. It's just we're not really tapping into it. And so that's why I want to learn a little bit more. But going back real quick, you, you said something too that I'm passionate about is scripts. You know, I think agents come in, they're like, well, I love people and I love, I'm, I'm, nobody's a, a stranger, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, like Melanie was saying earlier, you know, she wanted scripts on open houses and she's such a good relational person. Like you just feel like you've known Melanie forever. Mm -hmm. And you said, let's role play it real quick. And she was like stumbling and fumbling, even though she's a great agent, but she's trying to think of what to say. And in two minutes, you gave her the two pieces of advice, which maybe you share, maybe it'll help everyone. We may as well share it now, but he asks questions. And so the person comes into his open house and we both kind of have the exact same mentality. Let's ask a couple questions to get the prospect on our side. So maybe share that, that little message because I know everybody wasn't here. Well, sure. Well, starting with scripts, uh, I learned, and this was back in the 80s when I learned this. I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, it, his system was called Intertech. That doesn't mean anything to anybody other than what you do is you intentionally think about all of the objections somebody can have, all of the questions a buyer or seller can have. There's not that many. Mm -hmm. When you write them all down, there might be 10 or 15 questions that people would say, I have this objection or I have this question. So you write all those down and then you come up with the absolute best answer to that question, the way you would say it. And you might change it every now and then. Mm -hmm. But then once you come up with that perfect language, you write it down on the back of an index card and on the front of it, you name it something and then you put that to memory, you commit it to memory. And then all of these things are just rolling around in your head. And now when you're talking with somebody, you're making eye contact with them. You're, you're just having the relationship talk with them. And when they say one of these things that you already know the answer to, you probably have two or three different ways that you can just rattle it right off your, your tongue. And it's exactly what you should say. That leads them into the next part or down the path that you want them to do, which is sign a listing agreement or sign a buyer agency agreement or buy this house. Yeah, That's and how I work with scripts. Yeah. And I think that this is perfect because 
like you said, and my coach would always joke, sellers aren't going to seller boot camp to try to stump agents. They're just not. <laughs> They're not going to learn what to say. They just say the same exact thing. They've been saying it for 60, 70 years. We'll drop your, your commission. commission's too high. Where's the, your yeah, the you price know, is too low. Yeah. Or yeah. do you sell homes in my neighborhood? Yeah. Right. I mean, there's literally like 15 things they say. You're shaking your head. They say how long the have same you been in the business? Thing. Yeah. Okay. How long, yeah. Yeah. For all of us, that's sold? a little bit different. I've morphed that over the years. Yeah. Uh, certainly, yeah. but yeah. So the real quick thing when you, when you walk into an open house, we'll just throw it on tape so people have it. You know, we we like to just kind of when the prospect comes in, you know, basically you ask the prospect, "Hey, welcome to my open house. Welcome to my listing." Because I don't care who you're holding it for. Welcome to my listing. You know, usually one of two reasons people come to our open houses. Number one, you're a buyer looking to buy a home or number two, you're a seller looking for your home value. Which one are you? That's it. It's not rocket science. And then they're going to say, well, we're looking for a home, you know, because you're in control. That's your open house. They're at your store. So you're in charge. And then basically, well, great, Mr. Buyer, seller, Sally, Susie, whoever, you're going to walk through the house at the end. I just have three questions. My seller wants me to ask every person that they let into the home, would you do me a, a service and, and let me, you know, ask you those questions. And then you're in charge of the clipboard and you're asking how, you know, location, price, condition, one through 10, rate them. And then I need your email and I need your name for, you know, um, for security purposes, because we've let you in the home. And then when you ask them that and you're writing it down, they probably won't lie because they can't lie on demand, but they can lie when they're holding it. And they're like, mm, I'm going to just put a different name here. So it's just, again, you know, asking him questions. So I just wanted to throw that out because that's a, everybody worries about open houses and what they're going to say. So, so let's dive into by referral only. So now they're a newer age, maybe they're two years in the business. They've got a handful of, of past clients. Good. How do we nurture those clients in, in your system? So that's uh, that's a great segue. So first of all, what, what's the definition of a, of a direct personal referral? How does that look? What is exactly just give me some ideas of what a referral would look like. What are the qualities or components of a personal referral? Someone that you work with in the past that's now referring their mother who's moving into town. To okay. To find a home to buy. Okay, that's one. Basically, in a nutshell, for us, it's it's somebody has been wowed by your service and they've sold you to them. So when they call you, they're not talking to anybody else. They want you because of the efforts that you did with somebody else. That's a direct personal referral. Okay, it's it's not a. Oh, I heard your name from somewhere, and then I was calling just to kind of check it out. I'm calling about three other agents to see if you're the right one. That's it's similar, but it's not the same as I'm calling you, Dave, because I heard all this stuff about you, and I want you to do the same thing for me that you did for Bob. That's how that looks. So, uh, how many here have received such a referral in the past? Great, great. How many have you keep your hands up? How many have about 25% of your business because of that? Great. Keep your hands up high. Excellent. How about 50%? Great. 75%. Excellent. 100%. Okay. So it's, but isn't that a really, isn't that really a good place? Every now and then somebody messes it up and they'll, I'll, I'll answer a sign call and I'll end up getting them as a client and so that kind of messes up my thing, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's been a hundred percent. They'll sell that for you. I'll start referring that stuff back. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the, what was, that was what I was trying to get to. And that's uh, uh, the reason or the, the way we do it, the how is you guys have already got this figured out. If you sold a couple of houses, you've probably, if you're on Tina's team especially, you provide wow service. You've got an entire team that is just designed to provide wow service. And if you're relational and you've talked with these people, they're happy. What haven't you done to get more referrals? Mm -hmm. That was a question. Ask for it. Ask for it. Yes. That's what so many agents don't do. They just don't ask. So I'm intentional about that process. And so intentional that it starts when I first meet those people. Mm -hmm. When I first sit down with people, we're going to have our, let's say it's a buyer agent uh, introduction, and I'm talking with them about helping them find their home. I explain to them how I do business, that I am going to do everything in my power to find exactly the home that they want. I explain the, the process in our market that we have now. But by the end of our 
our conversation, they're going to sign a buyer agency agreement with me. And once they've done that, I'm going to teach them that it's, uh, this is a, my expectation for them is that they're going to send me two referrals before we close. People that are just like them. Okay. I'm going to do everything I can to help serve your needs, but I'm not going to spend any time going out to find new business, which is what most agents do. I don't spend any of my time doing that. Instead, I want to serve you and my other clients that I'm actively working with. And all I'm asking of you is if you, now that you're doing this, you're going to hear other people talk about houses. You're going to hear your, your coworkers and you're going to hear your people at church. All of a sudden, just like when you buy a BMW, everybody has a BMW. The same thing with buying a house. Once you buy a house, everybody that you start talking to, oh, I haven't thought about buying a house or I thought about selling my house, whether you're, whether you're dealing with a seller. And you teach them that when they hear that stuff, you want them to introduce me. You want to connect the dots so that you can serve them at that high level, just like I'm serving them. So that's kind of just how that works. Um, but that brings me, I've got a five-step process that I kind of wrote down here. I'll just kind of go through it. Um, here's a form I'm going to give you guys. It's one that I kind of use. Um, you just want to pass these things yeah, out. Copy yeah, they're just awesome. all yours. Thank you. I call it, I need your help form. And it basically is a form that is part of my listing presentation or part of my buyer agency presentation where I just push it in front of them and I, and I explain what I just explained to you, how I do my business. And right now, before we even leave, do you know of two people that you can put on this list that I could help serve? How many times do you think they actually give me a name? Very rarely. Very rarely. One out of 10, maybe but they have that sheet of paper and I explain how that paper works and there's a self-explanatory thing on there, but it's, uh, it's, it gives me a reason to talk about this again because a week after I've met with them the first time and they've actually seen some of my over the top service, then I get to say, Hey, remember that I, I need your help form. Do you have any more names? Did you have any conversations? It kind of sounds a little bit weird and it's not stocky at all. If, when you use a little bit of, of, of skill, uh, it's easy. And I look for trigger words. Whenever somebody says, thank you, Dave, you've done such a great job. Or this was really awesome. I love this highlight sheet that you make for my house. And oh, I really love how you did this. Wow, this is so good. What you, I mean, anytime you're getting kudos, thank yous, anything like that, that's the perfect time to ask. Well, I really appreciate you saying that. By the way, have you been able to talk with anybody that I can provide that same level of service to? And it's just a constant thing. And they're going to get in their mind that they're going to want to refer you. Now, when you start developing your, your database, how many of those people really want to play that game, would you think? Lots, all of them? You think everybody's going to be referring to me? No. But half of them will, OK? And you learn to focus your energies on those people that want to play that game. And the other people, you still serve at a very high level. And you still put them on a, on a call return list. Like uh, there, there's just all kinds of drip campaigns, drip campaigns that, that yeah. you do. And you, so they're still on that. And, and there's, they are still aware of you. You never forget anybody. But you really want to focus the love on what I call VIPs or your or A plus A clients, your A list people. These are the people that are referring you um, and they'll continue to refer you and you just go over the top with them. After you've served them, you're doing things like client parties and happy hours. And, uh, you know, you guys know about Ford, right? When you're talking with somebody on the phone, you pick up and you talk about Ford. No. Okay. Ford stands for family, occupation, um, recreation, and dreams. So these are things that you talk to people about. Every single time you're talking with somebody with a status update, because you're talking to people all along this process, at least once a week. At least once a week, you're talking to your people, whether they're buying or selling or doing anything. You're, you're relational. You're, you're developing a relationship. So in order for me to develop my relationship with people, I need to know about you. I need to know about your family. What's going on in your kids' lives? What kind of pets do you have? You know, what's, what, what issues are going on? I'm a little, I know what you do for a living. Where do you work? What does your wife do or husband do? So I'm learning all this stuff. And then I find out what kind of hobbies they have, recreation. 
then I find out uh, what kind of dreams, where do they want to, where do they see themselves? I mean, this is all not real estate related. It's just how we develop the relationships. And now I have information on how I can serve them. And it also helps me, re, you know, when I'm following up and giving them a status update, I can ask them a little bit more about their, their kid. How did your kid do on that, uh, on that test that they took? Or is your aunt feeling any better? I, last time we talked, she wasn't doing well or something like that, right? Um, so that's kind of how you build that relationship. And every time you talk with them, I'm just, it's Ford. And I'm going through F-O-R-D. I hope you guys are writing this down. So, so what, I'm just going to back up real quick because he said the first thing. And what I heard is the first conversation with that sheet, right? is training them to become your, basically like they're, they're putting you on a pedestal. They're, they're right. I mean, well, I hope they do. I mean, I am really give them great service. Right. right. I mean, and it's a constant effort. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah. we're always looking for ways that we can provide better service. And mm -hmm. if you don't have, if you don't have that mindset, yeah, you're going to be constantly looking for the next client. Mm -hmm. uh, I just really, this is over decades of doing this. I've learned I don't want to keep looking. There's so much work and effort and cost that goes in to getting more age, more, more clients. It just is. I don't spend any money on my clients. I spend money on my clients. I have parties. I know what's important to them. When I, every time I'm talking to them with this four dialogue, I'm looking for problems. I'm looking what's going wrong in their life. What's a problem I can fix? Oh, they just came to town and, and, Johnny's got a toothache. I want to refer them to a really good dentist. So I'm a dot connector. Okay. That's I'm, a, I'm my own little BNI or my own little Google. And I've got a huge database of other business owners and contractors that I know do their business the way I do. They're extremely high. Uh, uh, service, very high competence, very high uh, ability to do what they're supposed to do at reasonable prices. You know, there are certain people out there that do a great job for lots of money, mm -hmm. but I'm looking for the median. Uh, and, and having two or three of the same contacts are, are good, depending on where people live, depending on the nuances between, you know, this guy's really good at sheetrock, this guy uh, is better at just painting, those kind of things. So no matter what the problem is, you have a solution and you can help solve their problems. And when you have solved their problems and they say, well, thank you for referring so-and-so to me. Well, that's how I work by referral. And I'm always trying to get you good people, just like I want you to be out there looking for people for me. And it's again, you just keep on coming back to how you can help me because I'm helping you. And it's the only way to do business in my mind, okay? It's, um, if you eat, a really great meal at a restaurant and it was over the top service over the top you want to tell people about it that's how i want my entire database to be thinking about dave and the good thing about this is i'm not in competition with any of you guys it just it, i'm not okay they're not calling you or you might call them it's like oh, no, i've got an agent i'm going to call dave mm -hmm. you know that's just how that works so and there's a and by the way there's plenty of business out there for all of us mm -hmm. there really is i mean there's not an, an end to it and I support Tina and all the other people that are in my industry. If somebody says, oh, I'm working with, with Tina Call or whoever they say, it's like, that's great. You're a great agent. You know, if you know them, you like them, you trust them, and, they know, and they're doing a good job for you, great. that's how it should be. Okay, and then you just drop it and talk with it. If you're sitting there at a ball game, you talk about something else. You know, it's really easy. So you're creating, and there's a book I think called Raving Fans or Creating Raving Fans. And that's kind of what I see. Like reading my notes. He's, no, I, yeah, just, you are. I wasn't. Was that, no, okay, I, I'll take that back. I don't no. have that book. And yeah, so, but that's what book. you're doing. And what's funny is, so Dave's doing this. I was always like averse to asking for referrals. Like I felt that was creepy. I mean, you're shaking your head. And I'd rather go cold call a FISBO than ask for a referral. Isn't that weird? I mean, you know, but he's still doing something that makes people uncomfortable because I wanted people to just pick up the phone and just find me and like, you know, but that's not going to happen, right? Unless you spend thousands of dollars being Marty Hampton and, you know, she's, she makes the phone ring, right? And we spend thousands of dollars on Zillow. We make the phone ring, but it's not because they know us, love us and trust us. It's because we paid for them to call us. 
and yours is creating raving fans. And I have to go back. There's an um, agent. I can't remember where he lives, but I watched a lot of his stuff. And he scaled his team. So his team's probably as big as mine. A hundred percent of their business comes from the current under contract clients, under contract clients. And they just, because they create raving fans. So the admins are doing what Dave does. The agents are doing what Dave does. Everyone's basically duplicating Dave's system on the team. So this is scalable. That's exactly what I'm trying to that's do. That's what he's, okay? that's I mean, my Now guess. that I'm with EXP, yeah. you just described what I envision real estate, yeah, yes. what, what real estate should be. I mean, it's, uh, we, we get paid a lot of money to do what we do. We I do. mean, it is, it's a lot of money. There is no reason why we can't really continue to impress and go over and above and beyond, even when it's not real estate related. I spend a lot of time pouring into people when there is no money on the table. Okay. It's just what it's the right thing to do. And when you start having that, when you have that mindset, people will want to give back, especially if you ask them how, what can I do for you, Dave? Well, I really appreciate you asking. One of the things that you can do for me is, you know, keep your ears open. When you hear about conversations about real estate, just ask the people a little bit about what they're looking for and tell them the experience you've had with me. And if it looks like it's a good, a good fit, then just get their permission for, for you to send me a virtual email or something like that, a virtual introduction, which is just an email to both of us. And then I'll know that you've referred them and you follow up. I don't use business cards. I don't give out business cards. I can't tell you how many times somebody gets a business card and there's a lot of things that has to happen for that person to call me because of a business card they receive. And I do hear all the time, oh, I gave your name to so-and-so. Do they ever give you a call? No, never heard. So you teach people how to refer you. When they, when they put their hand up and they say, yeah, I, I'll do this for you. I, I'll be happy to refer you. Then you teach them how. And that's another part of all of this. You have to teach them. You have to to say, okay, the best way to refer me, I know I could give you a card because usually people say, oh, give me some of your cards. I'm like, no, I don't have any cards for you, but here's how I would like you to refer me. Just when you talk with them and you see somebody that was that looks like they're going to be buying or selling a home, then just send us a virtual introduction or an email. Send them an email, copy me in on it and say, Bob, here's Dave. Dave, this is Bob. You guys just kind of connect. I think he'll do a good job for you. And that's how that works. And then I follow up with Bob and away we go. Yeah, I love that. I so, love that. I love that so much. Uh, so the first step is to ask, right? We just talked about that, uh, how we go about talking with people. And I, a lot of times I'll say I have two main jobs. One is to serve you at a very high level, get your house sold, get your, find the your dream home. Uh, and, and the second thing is just for me to find people just like you. That's it. Those are the two jobs I have. And uh, that's just one of the scripts I use. The second thing is you actually have to do the over-the-top service, and that begins with communication. You're communicating with your people all the time. During the transaction, at least once or twice a week, you're talking with them. You're giving them status updates. You're talking forward. You're making sure that there's no problems, and if there is any problems, you're fixing them. You're doing whatever it takes to serve them. If, they're, if everything's going great, they just say, no, Dave, everything's going great. We had five showings yesterday. Well, you're just doing a great job. I don't even have to say it anymore. Okay, You guys know what happens. So <laughs> I thank him and he's asking for referrals. Yeah. Exactly. When you deliver good news though, that's yeah. what when you deliver great news, that's the time to ask for the testimonial or whatever. I call them trigger words. There's, yeah. there's trigger words like that we're looking for when people say them, that's a good time to ask for referrals. Thank you so much for all you're doing. Wow. This was over the top. Uh, there's just so many trigger words. I mean, there, you could actually just start writing trigger words, but it's anything that's positive that's going on in your real your relationship, your, your thing with them. Maybe you just solved the problem for them. Maybe they had a problem with uh, their daughter and you were able to refer somebody or send them a book about that issue. And they were just so thankful that you thought about them that way. I really appreciate that. I've been working really good. I'm, I'm very blessed in my business. I'm in high demand, but I'm never too busy for your referrals. Do you know of anybody else I can help serve at that level? It, it just, you just learn five different ways of saying the same thing and it all works out. I, I gotta say real quick and interject. I can't tell you how many times I have seen a client post that their sister bought a house or their friend just sold their house. And you're just like, why didn't they call me? Mm -hmm. I don't train. I never trained them this way. Right. 
And so that's the part that that's the struggle is my ours is again transactional because we can just go dig and find anybody. Sure. And then you're just boom, boom, boom. But we're constantly digging and he's not right. Both are very scalable, but but it's nice to see that my clients probably think of me, hopefully, and some we've saw in the remember we talked about that they have relisted. I've seen clients now relist because we're losing touch. Um, most of them will think of you when they need a service. So if you sell Dave a house, well, Dave not, might not move for five years. He'll probably call me back because he had a great, you know, uh, transaction with me. But when his sister wants to sell her home, he's not going to go above and beyond to get her in front of me because I didn't train him to do that. He doesn't need me. So he's just going to forget me until he might need me again. And that's the miss. And I think that's where I know we're going to go back to what you're teaching on our team and try to get into the relationships more. So, yeah, I mean, it really is about the relationship. And I mean, when you close on a property with somebody, that's not the end of your. So let, let me ask this. OK, most agents think this. Most agents think we're trying to get from point A to point B. Point A is we need a new lead. We get a lead. Point B is what? Sale. Close, transaction. close, close the transaction. Wrong. That's the wrong B. OK, your, your, your whole goal here is get a new client. Your goal is you are their realtor for life. That's the goal. Not only are you going to close, but you're going to stay in touch with them. You're going to you're going to give them pizza on their moving day. You're going to give them a closing gift. You're going to call them a week later. How did it go? You're going to give them a one month call. You're going to give them a 60 day call. You're going to give them a six month call. You're going to give them a year call. And every year after that is a happy anniversary. They get a card from you. You know their birthdays. You're in relationship with them and you stay in relationship with them. When they think of real estate, they think of your name. In my case, Dave Anderson. That, that's what you're after. Okay. And so if, if you're not doing those things, they're going to forget about you. I mean, how many times have I talked to somebody and they said, oh, my agent did a great job. Because I'll always ask, you know, you know, you, you're talking to me. I noticed that so-and-so sold you the house. Have they stayed in touch? Almost never. Almost never. You're missing the boat if you're not staying in connection and in relationship with your people. Yeah. Dave, I was going to ask you, so you have repeatedly said that you stay top of mind with your clients, and I was wondering if you'd be so kind to share what are those things that you do? Is it top buys? Is it seasonal things? Like, I think that sometimes that's the hardest thing, is, yeah. you know, to continue to run our businesses and don't forget about the people that we have to yeah. You have to be intentional about it. You have to block your schedule to do those things every day. You know, I, there's like every Thursday, I'm going to call a letter of, 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 the week, of the week. So I think I'm on I's this week. So every client in my database who is an A or a B, okay, I don't call my C's this way because I don't have enough time. But if your last name ended in an I, then I'm just going to call you and check in every single Thursday. That's what I'll do. Call my letter of the week. So I just pull, I have my assistant pull up my database. All the people that are my A's or B's that end with the letter I, your last name is an I, they're just going to get a call from me. They don't know that I'm doing it that way, but that's just a method that I use. So that's just one. Uh, another is, um, go so ahead. How often does that mean that you touch them on the phone? How many weeks in a year? About 52. Okay. <laughs> wow. So once a year, everybody's going to get a touch from me. Yeah. In that, in that realm. So each week, you pick one. Okay. One letter. Sorry. Yeah. One letter a week. <laughs> yeah, it's good. We got a big database. We got a lot of letters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might, you guys might have to divvy it up. Okay. You're going to call, yeah. you know, half the eyes. Half the yeah. eyes. Yeah. Uh, it's really for a single individual with good administrative health. You, it's about 400 in your database is about maxing out. Now, you can explode that when you have a huge team and you have a lot of admin people that are helping you with this. And, and that's another conversation I wanted to have with you guys is about your admin. I've got a great admin. Jen is just awesome. If anybody in this room has ever worked with my assistant, Jen, mm -hmm. she amazing. is just awesome. And, uh, but she has learned, we've had these conversations too. When she's talking with my people, she's listening for those trigger words. Now she's not a salesperson. So this it takes a little bit more effort when you're teaching somebody who's really wants to just kind of behind the scenes and, and just do what we do. But uh, she's come forward and, and she's, I've incentivized her to try to get referrals from our people too. So there's that way. But to answer your question more directly, to get back to that. Dave, can you explain that a little bit more? How do you incentivize her? I just wrote that down. I'm yeah. going to ask him. <laughs> Perfect. Every single deal we have, she gets a little, 
little bump. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, and so she has an incentive to have us to have more deals. And since we work by referral only, that's how that looks. So whether she's the cause of it or not, doesn't matter. She just gets a little bit every time. So. Uh, we do uh, client events. Okay, I have client ap appreciation parties. I just had one about two weeks ago. It was like the best fall day. Uh, it was that day that it was a high of like 60 degrees, 65, big blue sky. It was a Saturday. Uh, I was at uh, uh, Ken's Corny Corn Maze, and uh, I bought every, uh, over 100 people came that were my people, and I printed money with my picture on it, so I was printing my own money, and uh, there were $10 bills that they could use in the gift shop for buying pumpkins or whatnot, and I bought their uh, admission to the corn maze, and uh, so that was just something, I was just uh, an event. I'll have maybe four or so of those per year. This has been a weird year because of COVID. I'm not, this was my first event this year, pretty much, because March Brew was my first one. So and I how tried many to people do you get that come to the events? Usually not the, Well, there's years, different kinds yeah. of events. So yeah. the one I was just speaking of is a client appreciation party, or I call those big events. They can cost me uh, thousands of dollars, although it doesn't typically because I have sponsors that help me with that. But uh, having said all that, it's uh, this one is a successful one. It's usually somewhere between 50 and 100. This one was one of my better ones. Uh, the point is not who attends. That's a good point, though. Mm -hmm. The point is not that. The point is that they were invited. Mm -hmm. You've invited all of your people. You're following up, leading up to the event. It gives you another reason to call them. Make sure they're going to come to your event. And then you follow up after the event. Did you have a good time? Post some pictures about some things where you can show all the people that didn't show, oh, look at the time you missed out on. Okay, that's the kind of thing. But again, you're trying to keep yourself in their top of mind. Uh, happy hours. Again, I can get those things sponsored by my lenders or my home inspectors or the people who also help serve my clients. They're going to help me with this cost. And so uh, I love to go to new venues that are just opening up. Again, COVID 2020 has been a weird year. Mm -hmm. We've not been able to do a lot of the things, but that's coming back. Uh, but yeah, having a, uh, uh, having a once a month happy hour or every, you know, twice a month happy hour where you're just, I'm going to buy two drinks for you. You know, you're going to come in, you're going to get a chip when you come in, we get to hang out, you know, Ford, you know, I'm, we're talking about your family. We're talking, I'm talking about them. Okay, I am never talking about myself. It is always learning about them and pouring into them. Is there a problem that you need help with? I'd be happy to refer somebody I know that's gonna help you out of whatever issue you have. And again, I'm just trying to bring value when it has nothing to do with, with a real estate transaction. So uh, birthday cards, it'll be another one. Uh, anniversary cards, six month, uh, Hey, it's been six months since you bought your house. Uh, anybody here deal with new construction from the time it starts to the time it ends? Okay, find somebody, pay somebody, one of your kids maybe, whatever, go out and take a picture of the house every week. Once a week, just take pictures of the house and walk through. At the end of the time, you put it all together in a nice little booklet, put your brand on it, hand it to them as a closing, as a closing gift. Right. They love that. Kenzie, she's like, this is my, right up my alley. <laughs> I love that. Just That's little great. stuff. Yeah, just that little stuff. <laughs> she's so eating that up. I'm really. so loving it. <laughs> yeah, Adam's oh, like, no oh, way. Uh, <laughs> That's how you name my book. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a tear. But I love it. Adam, maybe, maybe you could start the company that does that for the agents. Aha. Uh -huh. After you get through due diligence, okay? We're all at due diligence. We're finally like taking a big deep breath after we get, get through due diligence. What do you do after your due diligence is over? Send them a, a, a package full of mailing labels with their new address and some packing tape. There you go. Just was thinking about you. Uh, when it's moving time, I mean, at a closing or leading up to the closing, what day are you going to move in? Tell me about your move. I want to hear how your move is going to go because it's different for everybody. Some people are going to paint their house first. Some people are going to do this or that. I'm not going to move in for a month. I'm moving in tomorrow, whatever it is. You find out about that and, and then I give them a pizza form. Here, fill this out. I'm going to buy pizza for you and your family or whoever's helping you move. Okay. And then I just order pizza and I sometimes can deliver it. Sometimes I don't have the time and I just have it delivered. Okay, so it's just again, yeah. I have something very similar that I started doing a long time ago. You know what I give some clients who move? A postcard of their home 
letting their friends know they have moved. Mm. Oh, Guess who is provided by? Yeah. Me. And my number is on it, but they're very happy to send it out. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah, to yeah. all of their friends to let them know that I'm a great agent and they have moved somewhere else. And the house is on it. We bought this house. Really? It looks fantastic. So, so Tom said for the people um, in the computer um, <laughs> that he does postcards, like announcement postcards that we have moved with yes. brand, his branding, but he gives it to the clients so they can send out to all their friends that we have moved with a picture of their house on it. And I've also heard of people doing um, two things, uh, parties. So welcome, you know, welcome home parties where, where Dave, let's say, would host. Have you done that? Yeah. So Dave's hosting the party and all the friends are invited and this is my realtor and this. And so he's, you know, I've gotten a lot of business that way. In fact, I got into a whole Polish community once, uh, some people that were immigrating here from, from Poland and I served the, the first uh, couple, uh, couple and all of a sudden, all of my people, like for the next uh, two months, were, were, were heavy, thick accent, Polish speaking people that I was their guy. And it all yeah. came from a, uh, uh, I think I thought, welcome home party or uh, yeah. yeah, something like a housewarming party. Housewarming. That's what I call yeah. it. And so what I do is I just, you know, I buy some pop and I buy some maybe Jimmy John's or something pop, like that. He said pop. I love it. We say pop. I, we say pop. I, <laughs> Not so <I>, yeah. <laughs> And uh, where are you from originally? Pennsylvania. Oh, that's why you say yeah. pop. <laughs> so, and then uh, I'll ask them for uh, a list of all of their friends that they would like to invite to this housewarming party. Okay, and I'm gonna do the invitations. Mm -hmm. And then I also send out invitations. I get my people's permission first, but let's say mm -hmm. 10 houses on either side of them and across the street. If they're okay with that, I'm gonna send them an invitation. And then, you know, most people don't come. I mean, it's usually 20 people-ish, okay? But I have like a little photo booth thing set up. Uh, there's a, a, a sign-in sheet, an opportunity for me to follow up with everybody. And they're talking about real estate and usually talking about me during all that stuff. And those are just new clients that I'm gonna have someday in the future. And I stay in touch with them. Until they really become a client of mine, they stay in my, I call them C's. These are people that I want to stay in touch with, but not to the heavy way that I do for my A's and my B's. There's a, real quick, we went to a mastermind. There was a lady there, their team will sell 300 homes and her and her husband, so it'd be like Kevin and I, let's say, running the team. Her and her husband go to dinner with every single client that it closes on the team. It like sounded miserable. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> was it 800 homes? It's a lot of homes. It was a lot of homes. And I was like, this sounds insane. I was it's like, every, every, night, night, like every night, night she's at dinner. Yeah, and then she, <laughs> she said she would go to double dinner sometimes and like the wow. same restaurant. And I was like, oh my God, but they don't spend any, it was $80,000 a year for the dinners. But she doesn't send her agents out. It would be like if Mackenzie closed, I'm going to dinner with Mackenzie's people just to get to know them and then keep them in the call group culture. And I was like, that is exhausting. I'd rather pay for Zillow. You got to be a high eye to do that. You got to be a high eye to do that. Kevin would divorce me. Be like, <laughs> you're <laughs> me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like saying no. So, I mean, you got to do what makes you comfortable, but think of all the things, you know. I mean, this is great. So, all right, what's uh, Another thing that just kind of along the lines, and this will be the last one, honor and appreciation. You need to give honor and appreciation when people give you business. I mean, it's important. Uh, I do driveway calls. I call them driveway calls. Let's say I'm at a listing appointment. Uh, I get the listing and uh, we've done all the paperwork. Everything's good. Uh, I'm driving away. I will call them. I just saw them three minutes ago. And as I'm pulling out of the driveway, I'm calling them back. And I'm just explaining to them I, how honored I am that you've decided to hire me and to work with me. And I just thank you so much for that business. I will not let you down. And I'm going to work very, very hard, not only to serve you, but anybody else who's in my way. That's awesome. That's a that's, a, that's just a nice little mm -hmm. uh, way to give honor and appreciation. Mm -hmm. um, Go ahead, Mackenzie. I have a question. Yeah. So if you yeah. do all these things, if you if you're a relational sort of agent and you're you're on your own, right? You don't mm -hmm. have a team. Like you just do it yourself. I have Jen. Well, I need a team. I'm I've been looking for people. I'm a terrible recruiter, apparently. <laughs> 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 So I really know how to do relationships with we my clients, but I don't have anybody that I can refer people. <laughs> Who wants to be on date Raise your hand. Uh, in fact, in, in Remax, uh, my last broker uh, owner would always just look at me in amazement because of the amount of business that just falls off my shoulders that I don't chase. It's because I don't want to chase it. Okay. I mean, the sign calls, the all the stuff that just people are always calling it. 
I just don't want to chase that down. It doesn't do open houses either. I don't do. I mean, there's, but there's so much that I know if I did this, it would be beneficial. I just don't have the time because I want to run my business the way I want to run my business. And I want to have these types of relationships. And then when I'm not doing that, I need to have a life too. I have a wife and I, she needs to, uh, to stay married to me and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's all that. I'm sorry. Now, you know, I'm going to take me a little bit longer to get a referral business going. So what if you would say to newer agents and those of us who haven't been in as long as you have, what would be, you do all these steps. How many transactions would you close a year? Based Double on your business. That's what I would just tell them. What you're after as a brand new agent, you're going to have to get out and do the hard leg work that all y'all know how to do. And when you get the first client, you're going to get another client from that client. That is your goal. You're going to serve that one client. You only have one person. You are going to serve that, that client at such a high level and ask for the business and you're going to get a referral. I would expect. And if you, I mean, even if you only got it 50% of the time, you're going to get, you're going to double your business. I ask, that's why I asked for two, because I might only be getting one. Sometimes I don't get any. Okay. It just happens. But if you did three deals last year, this next year, you should do six. And then the year after that, you should do 12 and then 24. There's no reason why you shouldn't be doubling your business all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can I say, as you do, I think it's really important to hire the right people to help out, to have an admin because you can't do everything. Oh, that's a whole other class. Your, yes. your that's a whole other so, class. Yeah. So, and I'm trying to learn that too. I, we can only grow so much and then we hit a ceiling yes. and either I'm going to end up divorced or, you know, with a heart attack or whatever <laughs> to have to hire those people and put them in place so that to it scale you up. Exactly. And that's exactly where I've been for the last 10 years. I've kind of been in a sweet spot. Um, I've, I've enjoyed it, but I'm kind of hitting a ceiling. There's only so much that I can do with the, with the database that I have. And, and, you know, that just looks like 30 deals plus or minus eight. And uh, I'm just now trying to get my price point up, but, and I do okay. I don't have that much expense, so I, I do okay, but I want to teach other people to do what I do because I don't think there's a better way to do real estate personally. I mean, you can do it where you're transactional all the time, but I would add the mix of being relational. Right. Then you the can just grow a team. This sky's the limit. That's, well, that's what I was going to ask you. If you had my database, you know, because it's been, let's say 11 years now, we probably, I don't know how many thousands do we have? Two, let's say it's 2,000 people. You could hire people to do a lot of this. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, you know, because my thing is I'm getting out of production. They, I want them to kind of take over and adopt those clients. And maybe I have to incentivize them to do that because mm -hmm. those clients are going to end up being those clients for whatever, mm -hmm. a long time. If they're not adopting them, they're just going to fall to the wayside because I'm not doing those. I'm not doing this. And I don't want to go have parties and I don't want to go <laughs> kiss babies and do all those things. Well, like, that's the nice thing yeah. about another great thing about EXP that I love. I mean, it's. I don't want to kiss the babies. I don't want to pet the dogs. Anymore. I mean, I'm not like, to kiss the I don't want to afford. I don't want to afford anybody. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the great things about EXP. I mean, one of the reasons why I think you went with EXP and why I'm at EXP is because we can pour we into this. other agents yeah. and you guys can do well. Yeah, yeah. I just like to add something. You are like me, and obviously I, I don't have the what you have <laughs> What you have built. So when I was a younger agent, I think you're 100% right. You need to double your, double your business. And at some point, your business is going to grow to such a point that you're going to have referrals, right? Mm -hmm. But not each year is the same amount of referrals you're going to receive. 20% of the people or 10% of the people, no matter what you do, they're just not going to like, you're not going to stick with you. They're going to fall out no matter what you do, right? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they just yes. forget because they see a beautiful thing on Facebook and they jump on it and have an agent they never met before, but they love the house. Right. It happens to me, it happens to everybody. Yeah. I try to drive 10 to 20% of my business from new business, you know, in order to be able to actually service the 80% I already have. So you're hundred percent right, but I think the truth is, in my opinion, is somewhere not necessarily between, but you gotta have both. You cannot have one or another. You gotta pay attention to make sure you service your client hundred percent, but also generate some more leads because you're gonna have to bring people in because they're gonna have some fallouts. So it just diversify. Like if I adopted thirty, because I think our business is like 
40 re 30 to 40% referral, 30 to 40%, you know, 30% Zillow, and then the rest are signs at whatever else. So it's a mix. But I really do think that it could be so much more. It, it doesn't have to be as hard. And for the agents that don't love to prospect, because all my agents, there's like maybe a handful that will actually go out and prospect, but they love the relational, relationship side. And so that's what we're trying to get better. Now, do you actually call it something? Because that team that I was talking about, the guy that does like a bazillion homes and he does it your way, he calls it the promise. And he said, and he puts that document in front of them and he says, Dave, you know, I have something we call the promise. And it's basically, I'm going to promise you that I'm going to do da, 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 da. And then at the end, my hope is that I've done such a great job that at the end of this, that you will feel comfortable getting me a couple names and numbers, like all of That's the rest of That's a great idea. I like that. Like, like yeah. Point it. I'm, yeah. It's a process. Yeah. It's the promise. Yeah. I like You're it. You're welcome. Yeah. That's exactly. I yeah. stole it from someone else. Well, I appreciate that, but that's <laughs> I just never implemented it. But that's really good. I mean, that's. Uh... <laughs> we have lots of ideas, people. Yeah. Well, this is the beautiful part about EXP. I always said I'm not the smartest kid in the room, but I'm smart enough to sit next to them, right? And so we learn off each other because I was actually sitting here in a surreal moment, going, "This is what's so cool." Because at our other firms, the top agents weren't teaching this. It was the new agents that heard about it, and then they're teaching it. And then we get to teach it to everybody. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's just thank yeah. you for for following us on the journey. So yeah. I think that's it. I've so covered questions. I've yeah. covered most everything. So yeah. just questions. Just questions. Questions. Yes. Do you give out some sort of um, appreciation to let's say that you had a client that would refer other business to you when that new business closes? And what what's a good kind of? Yeah. So let's be careful and let's just have this conversation real quick. There is no scenario where you are giving something of value to somebody in exchange for a referral. It's illegal. You don't do it. Okay. Just end the story. However, somebody, one of my clients sends me a, uh, a referral. I am immediately going to write a handwritten thank you card. By the way, I write no less than 10 or 15 of those cards every single week. Not thank you cards, but I'm just, it's a, another way I'm reaching out and touching my people. It just might be their birthday. I just might be, usually when I'm driving down the road, if some, if, if the Lord just put somebody in my mind, I'm just going to call them because there's a reason. And that usually means, oh, I was just thinking about you. And they, it, it's amazing how that happens. So I just drive down the road. I call it windshield praying. I'm just praying the windshield. And all of a sudden somebody's name pops in my brain and I call them and, oh, you know, I'm, more business but uh yes a handwritten card i'll stick a starbucks card in it that's it yes, yes, it. yes, yes. Yeah. i just stick up it, it thank you so right. much i really appreciate your confidence in me i'm going to work really hard to help them out uh next next coffee is on me thank you so much okay it's not that it's not thing that i uh, advertise that i do it's just something that a lot of people have gotten many starbucks cards from me i keep them in my in my briefcase me, I just said something to it. I'm 100% agree with you. I think you're awesome. And yes, absolutely. That's how it works. I get it. Yeah. I was at Starbucks at North Hills. And I was informed when I was in line, there's an agent, a real estate agent, who's going to buy me coffee. I know who that is. So basically, I was like, I don't know how many hundreds of people coming to got coffee. And obviously, I knew the agent, so I chatted with that agent. But then I forgot who she was. If I was, I, I was a person who getting coffee, there was no business cards, no nothing. I don't know why it was done, whether it's name recognition or not. Right. Right. So there are different ways to do it. And that's the right way to do it's it. It's a really great it's, idea to do that. But it's personal. See, the thing is, yeah. it's personal versus in person. It's just another money. spin on cold calling. Right. It's exactly. all that is. It's just another spin on door knocking. You're getting the phone to ring. Yeah. You're but buying what the you're business. Doing. Yeah. But I think yeah. your method works a whole lot better than what I'm trying to say. Yes. Yes. I think what you're saying is 100% there because it does work. I've been doing that for a long time. And if nothing else, you can just send them a cup of coffee. It's been a poor day. I was thinking of you, by the way, enjoy a cup of coffee. I mean, it works like a job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've got, in addition to real estate clients, do you personally see value in obtaining referral business from your participation in civic community or outside industry business networking? Absolutely. That just happens. Uh, uh, that just happens by default. I'm active in my church. Well, when I was going to church, now we're just watching it online. But uh, if I'm serving uh, the RRAR, I've been very involved in RRAR. And yeah, you just, by doing those things, you're talking to people and you know how it is. If you're in real estate, you're sitting in a restaurant, you're minding your own business, you're talking to your spouse and somebody three tables away says the word real estate. It's like, ding. Okay. You just hear that. Okay. 
So the same thing happens when you're doing what you do. If you are giving back, if you're serving, if you're involved in a church, if you, uh, I, I love to play disc golf. I've sold a lot of houses to, to disc golf people because we happen to, they we're just playing disc golf and I happen to find out that they're looking to buy or sell a house. Okay. It just works out because so every now and then that's, that happens. So yes. And then once you get them, you treat them like they're a king or queen. So what did, what did we get out of this? What, what's the number one thing? I mean, no, it's like just nuggets. Ask, ask. ask for referrals, right? Just ask. I mean, it's not creepy. It's not creepy. And it, quite honestly, it's, it's easy to do when you have given over the top service. Mm -hmm. Okay. That it almost starts there. You have to be that good. You have to be after serving your client, no matter what. And some people are just easy to do that than others. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sorry. Oh, I'm curious. So Dave, if you would go, how would you go back to some of those clients that you know that you exceeded all of their expectations? and and ask them for that referral if you you know i mean you probably you know the conversation probably happened but it didn't you know nothing came of it so how would you go back to them so uh buffini i'll give the credit to him i mean i've been professionally coached for decades and a lot of this stuff i've learned picked up pieces here and there always trying to better yourself just like we're doing now uh he had something called the apology letter and uh, he would write a little letter, basically went out to all of his database because, I'll, you know, you maybe have done this for quite some time, and there's an entire database of people that you've not been following up with. So you might send an apology letter. Hey, I just wanted to let you know I've not forgot about you. It's been a long time since we've talked. I wanted to say I'm sorry. I've really rededicated my, my service and my life and my real estate to serving you at a high level, just like I did when, when we were together. And, uh, and it kind of goes on that way. And then you follow it up with a phone call and now you re-engage and you start talking forward to people and you know, you learn more about them. And you, the whole time, every time I'm talking with somebody, I'm, I've got access to a, a, an app or my computer and I'm taking notes. Okay. I'm re I mean, I can't remember much. In fact, I have to write everything down. Okay. So, but I write it down in the computer so that I can remember the next time I talk with them, all my notes are right there. So it's easy. Thank and you. I think you could implement forward, even when you're talking to a lead on the phone, I think it's important to engage with the person and maybe talk about, you know, their family occupation. Yeah. I, in fact, I do the uh, open houses a little bit different than mm -hmm. you do when people are coming. It's been a long time since I've done open mm -hmm. houses, but when I did them, I had a, a, I had a, a sign in sheet. I wouldn't let people see the house until they signed in. Now I would get some Mickey Mouse at Gmail emails, uh, but typically, like you, you said, stand by the door then. Yeah. Gatekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm by the door and I just explain, Hey, this is something that I have to do for all my people. And once you sign in, you know, you're free to walk around the house. If you have any questions, I'm here. And then when they're about to leave, that's when I start to dialogue with them. And it's, as you know, it's a skill set. If you're a high I and a D and you've thought about the questions to ask, you can start engaging with people and start to learn a little bit about them. And all of a sudden, when you're asking the right questions, you're getting the information you want. And when you hear certain things, you already have that pre-memorized language on what you're going to do, how you're going to set up an appointment, how you're going to serve them, and away you go. So another eight, I think it was Kush that asked, so after she does all that, they go out the door. Obviously, you're not going to get a client immediately. What's your follow-up process with the list from the open house? Well, hopefully I have their email, their phone number, and where they live. And it's going to be a handwritten note card. Got it. I love okay, that. It starts out there. Okay, thank you so much for stopping by my house. I really appreciate you, you taking the time to stop by. Uh, you know, you might say, well, I just sold the house over the weekend, but I'm always looking for new homes to sell. Do you know of anybody that's looking? I'll ask people that I don't know. Do you know of anybody? And then I'll just stay in touch with them. And if they're not really interested... Like you said, there's a vast majority of your database that's just not going to want to play this game with you. That's fine. That so is high touch. Yeah. But it's personal touch because it's like you could call them, right? We could call the list. Mm -hmm. But if you send them a personal card, I think that just, I don't know, means a little bit more. Yeah. And then you might even say as a value, because my thing is always put a call to action too. Like you're asking, maybe you say, hey, and by the way, I, I, I curated a list of off-market properties. If you ever, you know, need a few extra 
you know, examples of what's out there that not everyone has seen, just just email me and I'll send it to you. Well, so that's you a just, high level. That's a high level point that I'd like to kind of piggyback on. Always in my handwritten notes, I'm asking a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to end the note with a question. There's purpose to There's do purpose this. to yeah. that. Yeah, I want them it's to reach back nice. out to me. Okay, <laughs> I am not one who wants to do. I mean, I've. I've been the one on the phone doing the hours and hours of calling. We used to have Tuesday night pizza nights at the office. We'd have pizza and we were cold calling. Oh, great. I know how to do it, but I'd much rather have people call me. So when I'm, I'm intentional about the phone messages that I leave, I'm intentional about the handwritten notes that I write, and they all end in a question that I'd like to have the answer to. Now, will people always call me back? No. But again, there's a, a, a percentage that just don't want to play the game. That's fine. You just continue to serve them. That's fine. But there's a small percentage of people that are, that's just the way they're wired. They want to be in, in, engaged that way. Can you give an example of some questions that you asked in a thank you call? Sure. It was at the end of an open house. Uh, thank you so much for coming by. Uh, we sold this house over the weekend. Uh, it's, uh, I noticed that you live in a neighborhood. Your neighborhood is very desirable. Would you like a free market analysis on your home? Let me know, Dave. Or you could even say it's a hot market. Yeah. You know, have you ever thought about investing in real estate? We have a handful of really great investments that we've curated for our clients. Let me know, email me, I'll send you the list. Again, just something, like something where they're gonna go, I've never thought about investing, maybe we should, because they don't want to move. When you Obviously, looked at this house, what about this house didn't you like? Mm -hmm. I mean, just end in a just question. Anything. It's just anything that's gonna get them to maybe, if they're halfway interested, to call you back so now that you can have more of a conversation with them. Now you may use those stupid QR codes that I used to, I go, why are realtors doing it? You have to download the app. I thought they were the dumbest thing about five, seven years ago. Yeah. Now you might even put a little QR code, in, like a little sticker in mm -hmm. the card. Hey, scan this QR code for the list of the hottest properties, the list of some, the list of some. They could just do, everyone has, every restaurant has trained our consumer base to use QR codes. Now we should use them. Now I think they're a great So here's a, and to piggyback on that, here's another little nugget I'll throw out there. We're just dot connectors, like I mentioned. I'll go and I'll, I'll talk with business owners all the time. I love business owners that are restaurant people and or people that are just opening up a new business. And I always ask them, how can I help your business? Oh, well, they always are looking at more leads. They want, just like we do, we, they want more people to serve. Well, great. And I will negotiate a special Dave Anderson discount if I push people their way. I don't want any money, okay? If, like my painter. Uh, my painter is one of my, my best referrers. And one of the things we started doing is, okay, every single time somebody comes to you by me, they wanted to pay me money. It's like, I don't want the money. I want you to take excellent care of them. And I want you to give them a Dave Anderson discount. Okay, so they get 5% off their bill or 10% off their bill or whatever it is. Now, if you get a, a, a company, a restaurant, anything that wants to do that, then you just get their permission and then you come up with a nice little flyer. And now this is value added that when you can drop in that little card. So you put in the card, thanks for stopping by my open house. Uh, just right around the corner is good berries. And uh, if you pre present this card, they'll give you two bucks off of your next thing. Thank you for stopping by. It didn't cost me a thing. Good berries likes it. I like it. We're good. And that's a perfect point because I always tell our team to say, you know, we've curated the right list of vendors that are going to save you thousands. So just, you know, when people say, oh, drop your commission. Well, look, we can, you can do it for next to nothing, but just our list of vendors. Like sometimes people say, well, I got a quote for 12,000. Well, our painter can do it for five right there. I've saved you the commission, you know, so we know because we do higher volume that we can save you thousands on this end of prepping the house. So yeah, this guy may be cheaper or this girl, but we can, we can save you money here. So it's yeah. kind of the same. same and I've got an advantage because, you know, it, with the property management, you all know a good property manager, by the way. Sean Anderson. There yeah. you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, she is awesome. Yeah, she is awesome. Uh, so that's my wife. And we get to, uh, we get to vet all these clients, all these contractors all the time. And, bad, and there's bad contractors out there we don't want to use. We don't want our people hooking up with. So we spend a lot of time making sure we get good people. I have to say with Shalon, what's funny is when I moved here, the guy that helped us find our first rental 11 years ago um, was from another company. And so we used him for our first rental and it was just, it's, it was okay service. It wasn't great. And the minute I transferred my rentals to Shalon, 
I walked in, I remember, and she had this big gift basket. And I was like, what is she doing? She's like, oh, I'm going to drop this off to the people that rented your property. And there was sponges and, and all this little stuff in there. And I was like, that's amazing. Like that, that was great customer service to me. So I can make a great impression on the renter. And she's do she's doing the same thing, the high touch. Yeah. And I love that. And the level of service from the other company, it's, hey, you got a leak, you know, basically take care of it. And with Shalon, it's, you've got a leak, we'll get it handled. We just want to make sure you're aware of it. And then we'll report back to you. Who would you like us to? I mean, it was such a different experience. And I thought, wow, I'm, I'm wowed by her. Now she's my for life. And so we push her out to everyone because we feel like it's a great, like, yeah, I wish I would have done it sooner. I just had my, you know, just easy. And you don't want to transfer because it takes time. Now I'm in the process of transferring every single one to Shalon as they come up. So, so if you have clients. Any other sense, questions yeah. online or here? Yeah. Any other questions? I don't see questions online. Um, anything you said, people listen because it works 100%. Yes. You're awesome. Yes. Thank you. So this is going to go on YouTube. So if you're local in the area and you want to be on Dave's team, he's yes, looking for you. I need help. I have lots of business for you. Yeah. Well, you need to put that out there on social media because I think you could easily have. Yeah, I need somebody rate. to help me with social media too. Okay. Well, I've got all the people. I've got the people, Dave. We can yeah, collaborate I, on that. So thanks, everybody. And thank you. Thank um, you for having me. It's been great. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Bye, guys. Yeah.